Since about 2010, Kickstarter and Indiegogo have provided some right brands with the ideal platform to launch a product. But for others, it didn't go so well. So here's 13, I'm not sure why we picked an unlucky number, of the best, the worst, and the wildest cycling crowd funders and where they are now. We'll start on a high with the innovative Bristol-based bikepacking luggage specialist, Tailfin. We'd never really seen pannier racks this light or luxurious before Tailfin came along. And judging by the comments under our first article on its carbon rack and pannier, some predicted the reason was that there was simply no market for such products. The rise of ultra-distance cycling events and bikepacking put pay to the naysayers, as Tailfin's first Kickstarter smashed its target in four days back in 2016. The demand for super strong and light luggage racks and packs, and what people are prepared to pay for them, has clearly gone up in recent years, with subsequent Tailfin products receiving rave reviews on RoadCC and elsewhere for that matter. As its regular product launches, including the recent edition of Frame Bags, there are no signs of the demand for Tailfin's products slowing down, and the brand no longer appears to need crowdfunding investment to bring its new innovations to life. From one of the best examples of crowdfunding success to one of its most notorious failures, Dublin-based Brim Brothers hit Kickstarter in early 2016, having tried and failed to bring its wearable Zone DPMX power meter to the market for several years already. The cleverly designed gadget clipped onto your cycling shoes and measured power from the cleat, with hopeful cyclists backing the project to the tune of 175,000 euros collectively. Unfortunately, the struggle to manufacture the product continued even after the cash injection, and in October 2016, Brim Brothers was forced to inform all backers in a statement that it had ceased operations and the power meter would not be delivered. More than five years have passed since Brim Brothers' grim news and after we contacted him recently, former CEO Barry Redmond, who has since founded sports and wearables consultancy company BR Sensors and Systems, was kind enough to provide us with a comment about what happened. Barry told RoadCC, while our Kickstarter project was a success from a fundraising point of view, it was ultimately a disaster for everyone. There is nothing to celebrate. The support of all our backers meant a huge amount to us at the time, but we did not deliver our part of the bargain. Barry added, you learn most when things go wrong. So if there's any positive at all from the experience, it's the lessons learned. Primarily, be very, very careful with crowdfunding a product that doesn't quite exist yet, both as a fundraiser and as a funder. It's in the nature of people to be optimistic about something new and exciting. That's how new things are created after all. But the trick is to balance optimism and imagination with reality. NOG's wildly successful 2016 crowdfunding campaign for the OI differed to most plucky startups as the Australian brand founded in 2002 was already pretty well established for its lights and locks. As we said at the time, this was a reinvention of a product that hadn't really changed since it was invented in the 1870s, with the slim design wrapping discreetly around the handlebar. It was a neat concept, receiving a largely positive Road CC review initially. But then the complaints came in mostly about the volume, or lack of it, and the spring mechanism breaking off, the latter of which we fell victim to ourselves. Nog went away and introduced a nicer looking, louder and more refined version, the Nog Oi Lux, which got better feedback overall. The classic and Lux bells continue to be sold on Nog's website alongside its other products, most of which are instantly recognisable and successful. Ah boy, another innovative power meter that never saw the light of day. And this one was actually fully embedded into the cleat. We were so intrigued that en route to another press launch in the summer of 2017, we stopped off to meet the inventors and have a look at the prototype. You can read the full story over on the RoadCC website. The impressive PhDs from tech startup Magnus AG, who work together at ETH Zurich's multi-scale robotics lab, explained how the power meter would be incredibly accurate by measuring real force rather than using its own parameter and measuring via strain gauge. For 610 euros, backers could secure a unit with delivery expected for late 2019. But unfortunately, as the crowdfunding failed to reach the target, the product never materialized. We did manage to get in touch with Magnus's co-founder, who told us that the technology is now being used in hospitals for patient rehabilitation and care. He went on to say, overall, we could not make it for cyclists, but we found another pathway for the company. As mentioned already, you'll find plenty of cycling products with smart safety tech on Kickstarter that, well, never saw the light of day. 
But these nifty LED lights on Lumo's smart Hernhill Harrington jacket changed all of that, raising almost £75,000 back late in 2014 and going into production shortly afterwards. The Hearn Hill got a good review on Rage TC, receiving praise for the bright LED lights and comfort of the jacket itself, but less so for the £250 price tag. Lumo went to Kickstarter again in 2016 for a new range, and as far as we know, the products were delivered after a successful crowdfunder. However, the Lumo website no longer exists, and a message on its Instagram page from 2019 says that it was acquired by Lumos Helmet. The Lumos website doesn't stock Harrington's or bags with LEDs on, so we can only assume the products are no longer being manufactured. Another crowdfunding success story, the original Switch e-bike conversion kit was successfully crowdfunded on Indiegogo and received a positive review from our sister site e-bike tips back in 2018. The simple system features a battery pack that sits on your handlebars, a cadence sensor on your crank, and a motor built into the wheel to fit your bike. After successfully crowdfunding the initial conversion kit, Switch once again turned to the public for its next smaller and sleeker kit, the version 2. This was described as the easiest way to convert almost any bike. In the second e-bike tips review, the second round of crowdfunding raised over a million dollars from 2,000 backers and the company grew from 10 staff to 80. To date, there are over 60,000 loyal Switchers across 100 plus countries who've collectively ridden over 10 million miles. In 2020, one in every 20 e-bikes sold in the UK was a switch kit. How about that for a crowdfunder? Raising over 100 grand on Kickstarter, the Hindsight team includes former Olympic team sprint champion Callum Skinner and promised a product that would enhance situational awareness on the road and will challenge the very way people cycle. That's some quite big claims. The idea is that the £200 shades would make looking behind you a thing of the past with angled lenses so that you can see what's going on at the rear. Our reviewer thought otherwise, saying that the hindsight glasses are a good concept but a long way off being a viable alternative to a good old shoulder check. Looking at the comments on the hindsight Kickstarter page, a few customers who have received their rewards don't have many nice things to say either. Hindsight says that it's taken on feedback to improve its product and has since launched their new glasses and a helmet that are still available to purchase on their website. We'd better get some more into try. The Superstrata bike claims to be the world's first 3D printed custom unibody carbon fiber composite bike and e-bike. And it was one of the most successful Indiegogo campaigns of all time, raising over five million pounds in 2020. However, as we reported back last year, as you'll see, the finished product backers were receiving wasn't quite what they were promised, as what we can gather from the thousands of comments on the Superstrata's Indiegogo page suggests that many who have paid thousands for a bike haven't received anything yet. Others have questioned the design, and Superstrata was forced to make numerous changes to improve the strength and rideability of the chunky seat tubeless frame. A recent response to a comment from an angry backer on Indiegogo says, doing something new in Superstrata's case is transform how we as a species will make things in the future, is always a risk, but we are doing everything we can to stay true to our commitments of delivering products. If you want to see lots more 3D printed tech from the world of cycling, then click the link up there. Despite many of the comments under our review of the zero aero wheel reflectors invariably telling you where you can buy far cheaper reflective sticks on eBay, Flector products have always been successful every time they land on Kickstarter. And our reviewer couldn't deny that the product was a functional and effective alternative to spoke reflectors and particularly useful for tagalongs and or trailers. Flector now sells various types of their reflectors for your wheels, cranks and spokes, and more recently took to Kickstarter again to launch its Green Disc, a chain lubing device that stores lubricant and freely rotates over the top to apply. There's now a wide range of Flector products, all still available to purchase on its website. The most crowdfunded cycling power meter campaign ever appears to have had zero success in actually delivering the products to backers. After showing a lot of promise when it was offering single-sided and double-sided power meters for a pledge of just £131 for the single-sided and £219 for the double-sided back in 2018. There's a grand total of 2,991 comments on the Kickstarter page, and 
1,207 on the Indiegogo page at the time of writing. Some of these accused the founders of abandoning the project and speculating on their whereabouts. Some threatening legal action and many even more dramatic than that. Despite us sending in quite a few emails, IQ2 hasn't responded to our request for comment so far, so we'll strongly assume that this one wasn't successful. After receiving a few emails urging us to investigate, RoadCC swiftly went into detective mode and published an article detailing backers' frustrations after they were left waiting for the iTrackIt bike security system. That's more than two years after backing the project on Indiegogo. A slightly messy situation emerged, which involved Condor Cycles strongly denying any involvement in the project after originally being cited as a partner on the iTrackIt website iTrackIt told us a combination of critical technical issues with our main chip supplier from the beginning of 2020, the pandemic and a reduced team severely affected the company's ability to deliver the product on time, and iTrackIt is still working on getting the product to market and fulfilling all their backers' pledges. Around 300 mostly unkind comments on the Indiegogo page suggest that the finished product is still some way off. But given their due, iTrackIt is still providing updates that they're still committed to the project, even if it's not going down great with the backers. Their most recent update says, We remain committed to finding a solution. However, we understand your frustrations at the extended delays. We are in the process of trying to source additional resources internally to continue with the iTrackIt 2 development. And we'll send an update as to how that progresses. Loffy hit Kickstarter with the first version of its Smiley Cycling Gloves in 2018, surpassing the 5k crowdfunding goal in just 36 hours and eventually raising six times that amount at just shy of 30k. Aiming to make journeys more enjoyable in the hope of shifting our road culture towards positivity rather than anger, the first two iterations of the glove received positive reviews on RoadTC and elsewhere. The decent technical features showing Loffy is more than just a pretty face, as the brand says itself. Having now launched the third version of its smiley glove, Loffy is continuing to flourish, with founder Jack Hudspeth telling us since the Kickstarter, the company has grown fivefold with no outside investments. We are now a very small team and are happy with our slow and steady progress. It does win the race after all. He went on to say that they sent out roughly 7,000 pairs last year and have shipped to over 54 countries to date. He's over the moon that positivity seems to transcend language barriers and pleased that there are tens of thousands of riders out there who want to spread joy. We'll leave you with the big daddy of all horrendous crowdfunding fails. The Chinese startup behind SpeedX had a hugely successful crowdfunding campaign raising about $10 million for its original Leopard Smart road bike with an integrated computer. Once again, the overwhelming success proved to be part of SpeedX's downfall, as the company had to figure out how to ship bikes to thousands who were promised a cutting edge product that was head and shoulders above the rest. What was delivered fell way short of the mark, so SpeedX went to Kickstarter again and raised hundreds of thousands more for a new model, the Unicorn. As the name suggests, the mythical bike never materialized, and countless people worldwide lost every single penny. As SpeedX went bust, owners of the underwhelming Leopard were left with a dud, a smart bike that was no longer smart, because the app no longer supported it. The full story involving a wildly ambitious young entrepreneur, the Chinese secret police, and hundreds of thousands of blue bikes dumped on construction sites was documented in this Herculean feature by Ian Trelaw of Cycling Tips. If you are highly skeptical about purchasing your next bike through a crowdfunding platform already, then SpeedX's downfall might just put you off for good. So what have we missed? Feel free to mention any other crowdfunders that have been successful, unsuccessful, or just notorious down below, and they might make our next update. If you enjoyed this content, then please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.